Hi guys, welcome back. So I am now in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia and I just wanted to drop this video. So basically in this video, I just wanted to give you guys a couple of quick tips which will help you to reduce getting over harvested when you're getting a hair transplant in Turkey. So I have actually got a script because otherwise I would have been going off on all sorts of different tangents. So uh, I scripted this video for the first time and hopefully it goes well. Um, but anyway, the main reason why most people go to Turkey for a hair transplant is the cost. It's considerably cheaper there than it is in some Western countries such as the UK and the US. I once saw a comment from a guy on another person's uh, YouTube video where he says there are some things you shouldn't go cheap on and he was referring to getting hair transplants in Turkey. However, the problem is, is that not everyone has a spare 15 to 25 grand to spend on a hair transplant. Some people take out big loans to spend on good hair transplant doctors in Western countries. However, I don't recommend doing this, especially not in this financial climate that we're in right now. You definitely don't want to have excess debt at this time. However, if you're earning 15 grand or more per month, then fair enough. You have the money and you can justify spending one month's salary on a good hair transplant doctor. However, unfortunately, most people are not in that position. And the problem is that even if you take out a big loan and spend it on a hair transplant in the US, for example, you're still not guaranteed good results. And I've seen this quite a few times on YouTube, for example, when guys take out big loans and they spend it on you know good hair transplant doctors but they still don't get the results that they want and the main reason for that is because western clinics tend to be more conservative with the amount of grafts that they transplant so what happens is oftentimes these people end up having further hair transplants and getting further loans and getting themselves more and more into debt so in a western clinic a person who is a norwood five six or seven may only get around 3,500 grafts, and they'll be under the impression that, that that's gonna be enough to cover their whole head. And obviously, if you've done your research, you'll know that it's not enough, and they'll end up needing more hair transplants beyond that. Sometimes they take out more loans, or sometimes they end up going to Turkey. And that's the one thing that I don't like about Western clinics in particular. I feel like a lot of them are not being fully transparent with their patients and they're not letting them know that they'll need more hair transplants after that one. They're not letting their patients know that if they're an award five, six or seven, they'll probably need more than one procedure. They seem to be happy enough to let them think that 3,500 grafts is gonna be enough to cover their whole head. And unfortunately, from what I've seen, a lot of people aren't really that happy because they're kind of surprised that 12 months after their first procedure that they don't have good coverage and they end up needing more hair transplants afterwards. Even though they've just spent like 15 to 25,000 pounds just to get those 3,500 grafts. Now on the flip side to that, Turkey have the opposite problem. They're giving out their patients way more grafts than they really need and for a much smaller fee of course. And that brings me on to tip number one. So for example, a person who is no with two or three and just wants to like lower their hairline or whatever, they'll end up getting like 5,000 or more grafts. And obviously that will definitely increase the risk of you getting over harvested. And I keep seeing that more and more as I watch these videos on YouTube. So basically before you get a hair transplant, you need to do enough research to at least know approximately how many grafts you will need to cover your hair loss. And you can do this by having consultations with lots of different clinics instead of just one or two. Most people tend to have consultations with one or two clinics but in my opinion, you should have a list of at least eight different clinics, which you have found through your research. And you should have consultations with all of them to see what they say about your hair loss situation and potentially how many grafts you may need. I had consultations with around eight or nine different clinics. Um, most of them were in Turkey, but two of them were in the UK. And all of them pretty much said that I needed between 1500 and 2500 grafts, except for one clinic. One clinic in Turkey told me that I needed 4,500 grafts and I'll let you know in the comment section below which clinic you think that was. And I'll just give you a rough guide as to how many grafts you may need. So for example, if you're an Norwood 2, you'll need up to around 2,000 grafts. If you're an Norwood 3, you'll need up to around 3,000 grafts max. If you're an Norwood 4, you'll need up to around 4,000 grafts and so on. Now this is just a rough estimate obviously, because some people have bigger heads, some people have smaller heads, some people have thin hair follicles, some people have very thick hair follicles, so that can change the amount of grafts that you may need. For example, a person who has a small head and is an old with three, versus a person who has a big head and is an old with three, you know, the person with the bigger head is gonna need more grafts because they have a bigger surface area to cover. But at least from this rough estimate, you can still go through your list after you've had your consultations with all these clinics 
and you can start eliminating the ones who are telling you that you need a lot more grafts than you really do. So for example, if a clinic is telling you you need 5,000 grafts and you're on over two or three, you know, you can eliminate them straight away. Now, some people might say, oh, you can just tell them to do less grafts. So for example, if they're giving you a higher estimate, you can tell them to do less. But in my opinion, that's just not the way to go. They're supposed to know enough and be professional enough to be able to give you a good estimate as to how many grafts you will actually need. So if someone's telling me that I need you know, 5,000 grafts and I'm an old with two, that just tells me that they're quite incompetent. And I wouldn't feel comfortable going to a clinic that's that incompetent where they don't even know how many grafts that I need. After looking at my hair situation, I would much rather go to a clinic who are capable of telling me exactly how many grafts I need with a good estimate. I've seen quite a few videos of this one particular clinic where you know, I've seen guys who are an old with two and three going to this clinic and they're getting 5,000 grafts. And what this clinic does is they'll put around 2,000 to 3,000 grafts in, you know, the frontal portion in the hairline area where the patient actually needs the grafts. But then what they'll do is they'll put the other 2,000 to 3,000 grafts behind in like the mid scalp area where the person already has a good amount of dense hair. And to me, that just doesn't make any sense. And oftentimes I feel like it's because of the case of the blind leading the blind. You know, a person will see a couple of videos on YouTube uh, and then they'll just follow that person. They'll go wherever that person got the hair transplant done, uh, even if that clinic might not be the most suitable for them. So for example, if you see a person who's like an old with uh, five, six or seven, and they're getting maximum grafts at a particular clinic, you know, that, that clinic might be good for them because they need the maximum grafts, but it might not be the best clinic for you if you're an over two or three, especially if they're telling you that you need, you know, 5,000 grafts. So in my opinion, instead of just following where other people have went, I think it's better to just spend a lot of time and research, like minimum three months. Like I said before, make a list of lots of different clinics, have consultations with them, and then eventually pick the one that's gonna be right for you. But remember, doing this will reduce the risk of getting over-harvested, but still, some people can get over-harvested with a lower amount of grafts, and that's where tip number two comes into play. By now, if you have been watching lots of uh, YouTube videos of guys getting hair transplants in Turkey, you will have noticed a lot of mixed results. Even from guys who have gone to the same clinic, you'll often see vastly different results. Some will have good results from that clinic and some will have bad results from that clinic. And I feel like the main reason for that is a lot of these budget clinics in Turkey have a lot of different technicians working and they're working on multiple procedures per day. So for example, you might have a friend who went to a particular clinic in Turkey and they might have gotten a really good result and that might have inspired you to go to that same clinic. You might end up getting a much worse result and the reason for that is you probably got a different technician doing your procedure than your friend. So in order to increase your chances of getting a good hair transplant result, you will have to request for the same technician who did the extractions of someone who had a good hair transplant at that clinic. For example, you might have seen someone on YouTube with a similar hair loss situation as you, and they might have had a good hair transplant result at that clinic. So what you should do is take that person's name, uh, take that person's photo with, with your phone, and when you're having a consultation with that clinic, you can send them the person's photo and name and say, look, I like this person's result. Can you arrange for the same person, the same technician or, or whatever, who did the extractions of this person to do my hair transplant? And that way you will get the benefit of mind of, of getting a technician who you know is capable of doing good work because you've seen it already, instead of just getting some random technician who might be new and might be less experienced. However, the one problem with this, of course, is that a lot of these clinics in Turkey will just tell you what you want to hear. And when you're doing your WhatsApp consultations, it's most likely with a salesperson. And obviously they'll just tell you what you want to hear just to get the sale. And they may say something like, yeah, sure, we'll get you the same person who did that guy's procedure on YouTube. But in reality, get someone else who's, who's available. But still, I think it's definitely worth asking anyway. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that basically a hair transplant is ultimately a short-term solution to a long-term problem if you don't get on any type of DHT blocking medication to stop further hair loss. Because a hair transplant alone doesn't just stop your hair loss. All it does is it covers the areas where you've already lost hair. But if you don't go on any type of medication, what will happen is you'll continue to lose the hair that you still had before the hair transplant. And if you do go on medication, remember 
that it's a long-term thing, so you have to keep taking it for a long, long time, or at least for as long as you want to keep the hair that you had before you had the hair transplant. So obviously it's a long-term commitment, so you need to think about it really carefully. And you should actually try and get a medication before you get a hair transplant. That way, if you find that you have negative uh, side effects from it, you can quickly stop taking the medication and then you can really think about whether if a hair transplant is a good option for you. Because obviously, if you're not going to be able to take medication after you get a hair transplant, you're just going to continue to lose the hair that you had on top of your head before the hair transplant. So, you know, a hair transplant might not be the, the perfect solution for you. But like I said, do lots of research. Investiga mucho. Нужно провести много исследований. Like, I don't know how many languages you want me to tell it to you until it sticks in your head, but basically, yeah, you need to do lots and lots of research. Because I don't want you to become like one of those guys who I keep seeing on YouTube who go to these clinics in Turkey without doing any kind of research and they just get way more grafts than they really need and they end up getting over harvested and then they start complaining about it and then on top of that they don't even get on any type of medication to stop the hair loss so i would say you'll need to do at least three months worth of research it's definitely not something that you should rush into and you should also try and stop your hair loss before you get a hair transplant. So anyway, that's about it for this video, guys. Um, I have another video with some tips on it that I'd recorded previously. So if you go and check out my month seven update video, you'll find it there. So I am now just three days off my one year mark since I got my hair transplant on the 15th of October, 2021. So I'll probably make like a one year update video at some point within the next couple of weeks. But basically there's nothing really to update since I pretty much saw my full results months ago and my hair, my hair hasn't really changed in the last few months to be honest in terms of density but anyway I'll still make that update video just to show you guys my full journey and yeah so if you guys got any questions remember to drop them down in the comment sections below and be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one peace